Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Star... Nope. Anadodia. I totally didn't get that wrong. Yes, welcome back to another session of Anadonia where in today's session we are going to be completing the next step along in our automation quest to get the 16 million ME storage component. Now, we've just finished in the last session the 4K ME storage component. That's what this baby right here is running through uh, with. As you can see here, we've got a stack and 13 4K storage components, but not just that. If we, uh, why do I have 39 of these? Ignoring that for the meantime, I was gonna show you the extra test for that I made uh, a couple of sessions ago now, uh, when we were first thinking about doing all of this stuff. So let's just drop this in the barrel with these. Now, do you want to know a funny, quirky fact? Do you want to know in an interesting bit of goober knowledge? Turns out when we first put this system together, we put it together using only 4K ME storage cells, which means if I wanted to, I could just start crafting some of these up and start safely introducing some new storage. I technically could have safely started doing it with the 1K, but personally to me, that kind of felt like a waste. And for much the same reason, that's why I'm not going to fill the rest of these with 4K. Instead, for today, we are going to focus on the 16K. Now, this one is very, very easy compared to the last two. Mainly because, again, we already have the infrastructure of this and the last one up there in place. So let's go through what we need, shall we? For the next step up, we need glowstone dust, we need the 4K ME storage components, quartz glass, and the calculation processor. Now, this one, we have already got automated. This one, we have already got automated. And this one, we have already got automated, which means setting up this next set, all we're gonna need is a few more of these mechanical hands, and obviously, the glowstone. So let's get on that, shall we? Let's make the hands, let's, uh, actually, you know what, let's just make the hands. Uh, then I'll come back to you guys. Okay, and with this little system set up, we now have the input for the logic processor, I believe it was. Let's check what it isn't. Okay, yeah, this is the logic processor. So all we've got to do is we're going to swap this chute in our inventory for this funnel here, or this tunnel, I suppose. We're going to put this here, and what this is going to do is we're going to force a round robin, which means for every one that comes this way, one will come this way. And then that will fall into the top of this crafting station here, and then all we've got to do is add in the rest of it. So we've got to take the uh, output from this chest and uh, input it into this crafting grid, and then all we've got to do is take an output from this quartz glass, put it in this crafting grid, and then we can set up our own individual lane for the glowstone. So, let's get on that, shall we? Let's put this funnel in place, and then let's set up the lanes that we need in order to import into this crafting window here. For those that are wondering what we're doing here, I've realized that I sort of put the glass in a very unoptimized position. It looks nice for this one thing, but since this entire place is going to be a factory for, uh, for, for this production and they all need the glass, it's in a very in improper place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this conveyor belt from up here into the main room, and this is going to carry nothing but quartz glass, which we can then fork off into the specific crafters as and when we need them. So that's what I'm working on now. So um, I, I just thought I'd keep you updated on that. So if you're wondering what this is, that's what this is. Anyway, back to it. Okay, and with these few adjustments made, we now have two of the three lanes already plotted out. All that remains now in order to finish this section of the build is the glowstone lane and providing power to these scudders here. Now, while I would like to just plug them into this system here, that's not going to work, because as it is, it's already on its fastest setting. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up another windmill system above ground, pipe it all the way down, and plug the scutters into the windmill. 
because I think that's going to be the easiest way and the fastest way to get these moving. So we're going to split that up into two jobs. The first one, get the glowstone working. The second one, get the scudders working. Sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan to me. Okay, and with that shaft put in place along there, we now have a working system to deliver glowstone into its uh, corresponding depot. Uh, obviously, we are going to have to add another <laughs> depot on the end here to prevent uh, constant item overflow, but as it stands right now, we are crashing. Great, love that. <laughs> At least it took this long. Okay, we're back and I am back. Let's get this bread gamers. So, yeah, let's go set up the windmill now. No, let's put a depot on the end and then let's set up a windmill. Let's get going. Okay, and with that gearbox in place, I think we've connected up, yeah, to the to the to the machine. We've connected up to the uh, mechanical hands. Now the next step is one to bolster the windmill upstairs, and two to actually speed up this rotation here. So let's just see how high it goes first of all. Okay, it works on 64. Then again, remember it is only plugged into one set, and later down the line we will be plugging it into every set of scudders. So we may have to still bolster the windmill. Let's see if it goes higher than this. It can do maximum speed. Okay, very impressive. So we don't have to the bol we don't have to bolster the windmill just yet. We can still have it run uh, on maximum speed for now, which is really really good for us. So let's see what the result looks like, shall we? Oh yeah, yeah, right. So this is where we might have to turn the speed down. We need this to also be connected to this. And once we plug this in, I have a feeling it's going to severely impact how quick we can actually run this thing. So let's go back underneath and let's plug the board in to the system. And yes, just as I predicted, adding the board into things, adding the actual mechanical crafter has indeed stressed the system. So let's go back and see what it takes to actually get this thing running, shall we? And then if it goes too low, Let's go bolster the windmill. Oh, that's actually still not that bad. I'm very impressed. And there is a successful uh, storage uh, component. There we go. The system that creates the 16K ME storage components is finally up and running, and it is working absolutely brilliantly. So we have a ton of 4K components in here, which are being pulled out onto this conveyor belt here, which is then being used to make the 16K. And so far, we've already managed to get eight of these, which is absolutely amazing, honestly. And that just means we're one step closer to finishing it. Now, if we're going by the logic of each one of these cubbies, except for the far two, which would be those two, being one of these crafting boards, we need one, two, for the uh, one, two, three, four, five. We need five left, so one, two... Three, four, five, and that would leave that one free for the final thing that we've got to automate because there is one final thing, a very secret thing, that we've got to automate that I haven't told you about yet, or at least I don't think I have. So that works out perfectly for us. However, I think I'm going to call this session here. Joke's on you, no I'm not. I want to do something a little more, or rather a little less, stressful than what we've all just been doing, which is I want to decorate this tunnel right here. See this entrance, I love it. I love the natural shape of it, I love how it feels, I love everything about it, except for the fact that it doesn't feel all that realistic. And what I mean by that specifically is the floor. You see, if I was actually here and this was the real world, which, I mean, what am I talking about? It, it totally is. But if this was me, I personally wouldn't like walking barefoot on stone. And I also wouldn't like leaving my shoes on as I'm walking about. I, I'm allowing the stone brick in here just because I feel like the warmth of the machinery would offset the cold of the floor if I were to walk around in here with no, uh, no shoes on, like with socks or just barefoot. However, out here, I can't say much of the same. I want this place to feel homely, I want it to feel nice and comfortable, which means I want to redecorate this part of the room. It should only be a very quick process. 
Uh, we, we're going to do it in stages as a little bit of a palate cleanser. And uh, I think we're going to start by getting some spruce wood. Okay, so with the floor in place, I think it's time we start decorating the actual walls. Now, I like the natural cave look of it all, but it doesn't really blend well with the spruce floor. One issue I have when I try and, uh, I don't know, homify cave-like areas is I can never tell the difference between what should be uh, the wall and what should be the floor. Because, for example, looking at it from this perspective, this should be the floor. Looking at it from this perspective, it should be maybe a table, and this should be the wall. But then you've got multiple layers in the wall, which homes and they, they, they don't really have that. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to try and simplify the actual home area. We're going to get rid of these sort of things just to make it a little more simple. So let's do that next. Okay, so with those little tassel bits cleared out, we have obviously left a few things hanging, which... To be fair, I didn't even know these could do, which is very interesting. Next thing we've got to do, we've got to fill in the parts of the floor that are now missing because we've removed blocks from them. And then we've got to work on the actual walls. So, let's do that. I think as I'm going, by the way, I'm just going to start putting in wooden panels where I feel appropriate, just as like... I don't know, markers, indicators, just to make sure that I don't accidentally put floor where there's supposed to be wall, if that makes sense. I think I may have gone a little overboard with paneling the odd wall here and there. I've already started carving out a pattern, which is interesting. It has unfortunately started to dig away at the whole cave aesthetic, but I'm kind of liking the direction it's going in, so let's keep going in this direction and see what happens, shall we? And with those last few blocks by the entrance, which admittedly I'm probably going to change later, I think, I think this is a good stopping point. I've sort of, I've decompressed from the stress that is, you know, all of that. And now I'm feeling in a good place to end today's session. Hey broskies, drifter from the further, 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 further future here, especially compared to what you were just watching. Uh, so, uh, funny story. Uh, the video that you just watched, that short seven-minute clip show, basically, um, that was all I recorded for this episode. Or rather, no, I recorded an hour's worth of footage, but cut down, it only equated to about seven minutes of content, which, you know, is fine, but it means that I'm missing out on... I would do the math, but I don't want to, like, spend five hours doing the math. I'm missing out on the other amount of time necessary to make up the 25 minutes that this episode is supposed to be. So, since I went through a phase of recording without editing, I have, like, seven sessions after this that I have in the works to be edited. So I'm just going to drag what was supposed to be the next episode into the timeline and start editing through that uh, until this episode is 25 minutes long. So I'm only adding this part. I, I normally would just completely just do it and not tell you, but I'm adding this part specifically because I don't want there to be any, like, weird transition that feels uncomfortable with no explanation sort of thing. So I'm just letting you know now uh, that that's why, because the footage you're about to see was supposed to be the next episode. Uh, but yeah, um, hope you have a good day. Enjoy the rest of the video. See ya. Okay, so funny story, my entire computer shut off, which means uh, the last 45 minutes got completely corrupted. Uh, it shouldn't have, I've just watched through it all to make sure it's still there, but in the, in the event that it is, hi, hello, how are you? And after watching over the last bit of footage, I'm really glad I, I, I did watch over it, because if we just pull this schematic back out of the cannon for a second to look at where it's placed here, do you notice something very interesting about the placement of this contraption? It, it's out of line with the rest of the build, because this one is a four-length uh, spoke, uh, and this one is a two-length. So what we've actually got to do for this one specifically is we've got to push the entire thing 
over in this direction by, is it one block or is it two blocks? By two blocks, which means that this initial part here isn't going to connect. However, when we put in the second one uh, for this position here, it will. Just uh, something I'm glad I noticed there. But yeah, sticking this back in the cannon, we do still have everything we need. It just means when we build this, we're going to have to add a couple more tweaks in. Uh, but what we're going to do now, grab the gunpowder, and we can just watch this thing go. So, um, let's... Let's do that. Oh, and just as I'm getting into position to record the time lapse, of course my game crashes, which means it's gonna build without me here. So even when I'm not recording the replay mod, I still can't get a f time lapse. You asked for a specific amount of shafts. You asked for 23 shafts. How are we missing more shafts? I don't understand. Is this what you've built? Is this? It, it's done the whole thing. It has done. The whole thing in the time it took for me to log back on. Great! I love not getting a time lapse. That makes me so unbelievably happy. Here, have the rest of my shafts. And then you can suck mine. And it's done. Right then, all in all, not a bad put together. Now, we've just got to, uh, you know, fix the small bits. Okay, it took a little bit of jury rigging, but I now finally have both lanes, not the middle one, but both of these lanes up, running, and functional. All that means now, like I said, is I've got to get this middle lane running, which is an easier job than you might think. All I've got to do, I've got to connect this right here into this right here. So let's remove this one, plug it in here, and then extend the rods. That should now be 100% working. Uh, there is a small bug I've noticed with the schematic cannon and brass tunnels. They don't seem to function at all uh, until you replace them. So if I just mine this one now and then put this one here, that should fix the issue. If not, then it does mean I have to just uh, pull this out here. And then that one should now start splitting down here. There we go. Although why it's uh, a forced split is interesting. Oh. No, there we go. I think, yeah, it's catching up now. There we go. Uh, and with this one done, I, I think we might have to replace the mechanical arms, obviously. But this pattern should be completed. Let's just check the 40, uh, 64k, sorry. Uh, yeah, quartz glass, 16k storage components, and calculation processes. Uh, since it isn't moving them, that doesn't mean we do have to replace these and then obviously connect them into the windmill power grid. But that's just as easy as... Yeah, I figured that would overstress the system, but that's fine. We were, we were in the market to uh, un-stress uh, the system anyway, and by that I mean, you know, adding on the sales. Oh, I'm crashing. Great. I might as well just go f*** myself. Ooh. Ah. Apparently, that's the maximum strength a windmill can get. I didn't know that they had an upper limit. That kind of scarpers my plans, because I was planning on just expanding this one forever, so... If this one can't support the rest of the operation, we're gonna have to make more. However, despite the fact that it's still a maximum strength windmill, the system is still overstressed. So, we're gonna finish connecting this to the mechanical arms, and if that still doesn't work, we're gonna have to turn down the speed, which isn't great. However, it is something that can be circumvented with watches of flowing time. It's not something I want to do, but it's a very viable option. Let's turn it down by one. That's not enough. Turn it down by two. Still not enough. Three. Still not enough. Okay, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to quickly check to see if we can merge multiple windmills together. Wait a second. Hang on. I've just realized something. This is the wrong windmill. I, I built up the wrong windmill to maximum size. This one is the one that's currently running our operation. No wonder the extra ones didn't help at all. <laughs> the, the damn system, it, it was never helped. It was never extended. This one needs to look like this one. Let's make this one look like this one, and then we'll see if we need to add in a second source. I think we will at some point, but I don't think we will just for this extra board if we max out the windmill. So let's go get some more, let's go get some more of these windmill sails. Okay, maximum speed windmill. Let's try this again. Okay, now we're up and running. 
I'm gonna throw the excess sails back in the tablet, we're gonna see if we can up the speed of this thing in the speed controller yet, and then if not, we're gonna move on to the next part of our plan. God, I love it when I'm right. Oh, I thought for a second there we'd be able to manage it. Nope, it's stuck at 128, but given, you know, the fact that we are running two whole system operations through this thing, I am perfectly fine with that. In fact, it looks a little quicker than when I left it last time. That could just be my eyes deceiving me. But it does look like it's moving a little quicker. There we go. I mean, it's already in the process of building the next tier. We've done it. We have an automated 64K ME storage component system. That is absolutely brilliant. We can just leave this going now. Again, it's not the fastest in the world, especially compared to this one, but that's because this is also being boosted by a watch of flowing time. Uh, but we've done it. We've got to the 64K stage, which means the next step would be the 256K ME storage component. Now, the issue with this one is that while it still uses the storage components, the quartz glass, and the calculation processor, it resets itself back to redstone for the next two before switching back to glowstone again, which means the next two after this one are gonna have to use the redstone line, which, as you can see, we don't really have set up to go down this far. It wasn't designed to come down here. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add a second splitter, maybe somewhere over here, maybe somewhere across the middle here, just somewhere that we can give it access to this set of boards. Hell, maybe we can run it through this top part at some point. I don't know. But since I'm sticking to the goal of having one upgrade per session, and since we haven't even gone to half the time we'd usually record one of these sessions for, I say we do a little housekeeping. And by that, I mean I want to finally figure out what the hell is wrong with this automated lava system. Because as you all know, it should be working. We should have an infinite amount of lava here, but as you can see, we don't. And I want to figure out why. Now, my current working theory is that the reason it's not working is because of this obsidian. I think we've put it in a place where it can't actually take all the lava it wants. My second theory is that it's because this fan is too slow. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna disassemble this thing, we're gonna reassemble it as far away from a lava, not a lava, an obsidian pillar as we can, and we're gonna see if that fixes things. Of course, we've also gotta do this in a way that doesn't burn all of our equipment. Thank God for the magnets. So this spot here looks just about right. However, as you can see, there are practically zero blocks that we can build upon, and I'm pretty sure angel blocks no longer exist. Yeah, angel blocks don't exist. So give me a second while I find a way to place something in lava. Ah, interesting. We have a ton of pink sand. No EMC value, but we can surely get more of it. All we've got to do is stack it up in the lava until we have something to build off of. Huh, that's interesting. That isn't as far down as I thought it was. Right then, so, first things first, we have got to put into position... Uh, let's do the gears. Give me the gears. Here we go. And then the encased fan. That's it. Connect the gears together like so. The next part that we've got to do is we've got to attach the mechanical pump. So let's put the pump on here. Flip it around using the wrench. And attach the ender tank to the pipe. Right then, all we've got to do now, add the redstone block to turn on the fan, and that should be providing rotational power. Now, as you can see, it did start to suck, and if you click on this, it is slowly building up with lava. It's incredibly slow, but it's happening. So, what we need to do now, since it is filling up with lava, is we're going to go back to the overworld, and we're going to see if it continues to fill from the other side. If not, we might have a bigger issue on our hands, that issue being that the chunks aren't staying loaded. Okay, so, on this side, if we click on the tank, it says once again it is empty, and the pump is not filling up. Is there so- oh! It had some in there for a second, it's slowly ticking away. It seems every time it even gets, like, 0.2 of a millibucket, not, not even 0 0.2, 0 0.002 of a miller bucket. It slowly fills up. What that's telling me... There we go, you can see it ticking up now. What that's telling me is that it is filling with lava, but it's doing it so incredibly slowly that it isn't efficient. What we need 
is a speed controller. So, even though it's a little jury rigged, let's see how high we can get this thing to g Don't you dare. <laughs> Not happening. Okay, we can't get it to 32. What can we get it to? Not 28? 24? No? 20? No? 16? Okay, so you're telling me you're useless? Got it. Let's make more of these. Let's see if adding a second fan will help increase how fast we can make this go. Now that just felt unfair. Okay, while I went back to make the other one, I did make a couple more as well. I made three total just because, I mean, to be completely honest, I didn't believe two was going to be enough anyway, but, you know. Either way, let's see if we can turn this up now. So we can go from 16... Okay, we can go to 20. From 20, can we go to 24? Yes. Can we go higher than 24? 28? 32? Okay, we're getting somewhere. 48? 64? Okay, we're getting a lot higher than I thought we would. 80. 80 is our upper limit, which is brilliant for what we need. So, no, that's not what I'm trying to do. Oh, that could have been bad. Right, so, clicking in this thing, though... It looks like it stopped sucking up lava again, which is really annoying. Huh. Okay, that's doing something, and it's certainly sucking it up a lot quicker. But it's gonna stop at some point, isn't it? I have a feeling it's gonna stop. There we go. It stops at 1,000 millibuckets. It stops at a single bu bucket. Do you mind? All that tells me is it doesn't consider this to be an infinite lava source, which is interesting because we're literally in hell. I've got one final option before we call it there. I don't want to end on a failure, so I'm going to try one last thing. You see, inside of the Project E mod, again, I know we're going back here, there is an item known as the Vulcanite Amulet. It's the other version of the Evertide Amulet. And one of its abilities is that it can act as an infinitely full lava bucket. What I'm thinking is, instead of just using it on the smeltery, if we have this constantly being used onto the- oh, for God's sake, onto the tank, constantly filling the tank, we won't need this setup, as cool as it is. We can just have the ender tank constantly full. So I'm going to make myself a Vulcanite Annulet, and I'm going to grab one of the autonomous item users from our farm, and we're going to see if we can get this to work. The only reason I can think this isn't working is because it says it requires an EMC value, and this thing doesn't have an EMC value. But as I'm right-clicking it now, it's also not working for me. I mean, if I right-click the ground, it works, but if I right-click the tank, it doesn't. So maybe, maybe, maybe... What if I replace this ender tank with a create tank? So if I right-click this tank, this one does fill. I can fill this one with the annulet. The question is if this thing can. But if this thing can be filled with the annulet, what we can then do is we can grab the fluid extraction pipe and we can have it extract into the ender tank. I know I could make another one just by pressing iron sheets, but I'd rather die. Let me just take this whole thing. Okay, and I believe this is actually working. If we shift click this, and uh, no. No, it's not, oh, it is. Okay, it is. It is slowly but surely sucking it all out. That's brilliant. I don't know why it's going so slowly, uh, maybe it's just something with the ender tank itself, uh, but it is slowly but surely going up. You can see it's being drained from the tank, and then whenever this thing goes off, it gets refilled again. At least it should be, but it's not for some reason. That's concerning. And yeah, if we have a look over here at the smeltery, it is completely full of lava. And if we shift on this tank, it is slowly starting to fill up with lava. There we go. See, it's got 365 millibuckets in there. I'm not sure why it's not going any higher, though. That's no good. I mean, this tank is still being drained. This one is still being filled. I'm not sure why the other one isn't still connected. That's really weird. I hate how so much of my infrastructure is reliant on watches of flowing time. But if I just right-click to speed this thing up, that has indeed sped up. That is now full of all the lava that was in this tank, and this is producing no more. 
for some unknown reason. What if I do it myself? Now, if I do it myself, I can keep it filled. It's just as quickly gonna get sucked into the ender tank. It very much might be just because it doesn't have any EMC value. <sighs> one more try. We're giving it one more try. And I believe that that has finally fixed our issue. It's a little more long-winded of a fix than I was hoping for, but it does indeed solve the issue of us running out of lava. We have a single magmatic crucible being powered by a solar panel tier six, which is piped into the ender tank, which is now completely full with lava. This is being imported, uh, having cobblestone imported into it by an energy condenser, which is being piped into the device. And all of this is being powered by magma power, by lava power, by heat, which is obviously also powering the speed controller. Uh, but yes, housekeeping has been done. We now have infinite lava. Not that we much need it for the original reason that we made it. I mean, we don't really use the smeltery anymore, except for literally today when we made Invar. Uh, but it's always good to finally have that checked off. I mean, it's been a goal in the series since we got the smeltery to give it infinite lava, so I mean, that's, that's pretty good. I'm pretty proud of doing that. It wasn't on here, but nonetheless, it was a very big achievement. And with that achievement, I'd say it's time to end today's session here. So if you did enjoy today's episode of, uh, God damn it, I nearly said Starsick again, of Anadonia, then uh, make sure to leave a like. If you have anything you want to say about today's episode, or if you have anything you want to say about me or the channel in general, make sure to leave a comment. And if you enjoy me and my content in general, then remember to subscribe down below. And uh, yeah, that's it from me today. So in case I don't see you, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night. Oh, great, we're crashing right as I'm doing my outro. Isn't that perfect? You know what? Fuck it, I'm not coming back. If we're crashing, we're crashing. Bye-bye, guys. See you later. Hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>